Welcome back to Cultivated Live from Planet 13 in Las Vegas. I am Jay Rosenthal. She is Krista Raymer. You are Eric Schlissel. Yes, Not sir. Not Manier. Manier is coming on next, but you are Eric Schlissel. We're going to talk about pre-rolled hardware. Yes, sir. I want to talk about that because you have great insight of what's happening in cannabis, especially at the retail level. And retail is on a major expansion from where it was two, three, four years ago. And there'll be a major expansion two, three, four years from now. Talk about what this sort of solution does for, like, a, I'm a retailer, want to open up. Yeah. I don't know anything. Tell me. I really appreciate that. And yeah. also, thank you for having oh, me today. Pleasure. Really, really great. Um, Pre-roll fills a very specific niche. And I'm going to take a step back before I get into sure. that niche. Curate, the company, our, our parent company, has a long and sturdy past. We met, I believe, in 20. 18 yeah. maybe yeah and we got started in 2016 and in 2016 2017 i was figuring out where we're going as an organization because the industry wasn't quite mature enough for yeah. what we had to offer and we started offering it and then we moved to canada in 2018 and things really started taking off and what i realized early on <clears throat> excuse me is that everybody's trying to do too much for too many people and consultancies in specific have a problem of saying yes to too much. And, and instead of going like this and expanding their scope, they go like that and they get wobbly. Right. And so I didn't really want that for curate, but I see these micro needs of the industry and over time curate has expanded. We have about 50 people now. We're kind of, kind of all over the place, the United mm -hmm. States and Canada. But our team has matured and developed to the point where I can look at the components of what Curate offers. And as I said the other night, if companies aren't wise enough to use the whole Curate service delivery platform, then, okay, why don't we just spin off a little bit of it and make it bite-sized chunks for people that just need one thing mm -hmm. or two things or whatever. And we're happy to help with all the other aspects of what we're doing, but it's really taking the Curate procurement and logistics team, spitting them out a little bit, putting a website up, and then selling the hardware components of what we do. So to paint the picture a little further, when Curate goes into a store or a facility or a grow or whatever, we ship out essentially everything pre-configured. We come on site, we spend eight hours typically. If the site is ready and they right. follow the instructions, you know, mm -hmm. shit happens. Um, but we our team typically spends one, maybe two days, depending on how the complexity and the size. And this essentially network in a box and pre-configured tablets and pre-configured printers and all of the specific um, needs of our point of sale and seed to sale partners. We know all of this and we have all of this internal as part of our process. So why not take that and offer that as a standalone uh, option? Because not everybody needs all the services we're offering. And now we're at a point where we can start peeling that off and, and creating value with pretty light touch. You know, a lot of this is kind of automated on the back end. A lot of this is process that we've done already. And we've been selling hardware through pre-rolled you know, for five months at this point. Mm -hmm. And we have a system down. We know how to evolve what we're doing, again, to go like that. And so pre-rolled is really for those just getting started. And it's for people that... Well, also need printer refills. Everybody needs that, right. right? Over time, you need a lot of things. But it's like, okay, well, where do I begin? And I think that's a bigger question in our industry right now because, frankly, New York's going to make a whole new line, a whole avalanche of people coming in saying, what do I do now, yeah. right? I got my license where I want to apply. Ah. And the question is not being answered well enough by anybody. And this is just one of the answers. Okay, you can start with pre-rolled. And we have our close friends and partners, and that's an expanding list of people, that we can say, okay, have you thought about what software and why? And then we provide the right introductions, but it's also 100% always giving them the right hardware. Now, installing the hardware is tough, and we're, we're getting into those implementation services as a separate scope from what Curate does. Curate does a far more white glove approach than what pre-rolled will do, mm -hmm. but there's also a need for that. And not every operator, as you know, has a ton of experience, but some do. Some do. What, what we saw in Canada together mm -hmm. is all the ex-Lululemon, all the ex-Burberry, all the ex-executives from large-scale retail coming in and asking the right questions. Right. right? Like, okay, yeah, I can get one location up, but how does that work with five? How does that work with multiple states? And as, a, as an organization, the larger curate is trying to say, okay, 
you know you have these problems, or you might not even know you have this problem, but segmented, this is what we solve for, and you don't have to think about it. And that's really the idea behind pre-rolled. They know they need hardware. Point of sale companies know they don't want to sell hardware, and they don't want to have that responsibility, and they know they need to be able to trust the people that are doing it. Mm -hmm. And so as a trusted source, Curate has built a long reputation of relationships. We just launched our 300th location. And with pre-rolled, it allows us to expand a little bit more without really, um, firstly, having a ton of investment in, in, mm -hmm. in time and people and so on on our end. But also, it allows us to have more of a, a halo. Yeah. It gives us more opportunity. We've talked about this a lot with people who've come in over the past couple of days, that there is so much emphasis on getting to day zero. Right. Like, so much energy, time, money, all that. Right. And a considerably less time, what it's going to be like on day one. Right. Like, and to my mind, anything that can be taken off an owner operator's plate before day one, right. that they can actually focus on what it's actually going to be like to run a business mm -hmm. is better. Cause yeah. I, cause it turns out getting to day zero is actually like not the hardest part. Yeah. Getting to day 365 is actually a lot harder, uh, I think. And so to my mind and I'll ask Krista too, like helping to alleviate some of that burden. Yes. Like you don't need to think about, they, they shouldn't need to think about all those things all the time. They should need to think about it to get open and have you think about a lot of it and then say, well, what are we going to be like when people start coming through the doors? Absolutely. And who are we going to be when we grow up? Right. Right. So, so for, look, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had a series of businesses over the years and I've been through quite a bit of being on many sides of many tables. Right. right? And in this industry, we don't have a long track record. Right. We certainly don't have a long track record of success. Right. We have a long track record of people coming in and having a window first mover advantage, sometimes second. But then when the third movers come in or the market flattens or the price of flour goes through the floor, everybody's business model gets all screwed up. And the more as an entrepreneur, I can help other entrepreneurs alleviate that pressure and that pain and know what they're getting into, the better I feel, right? Yeah. Forget about the business, right? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, we're trying to help people succeed. And we know being in the industry for long enough that those that are here today will may or may not be here tomorrow. But it's the people that have discipline early and learn those hard lessons, either by hiring a company like Forte to run them mm -hmm. through a boot camp mm -hmm. or a consultant to help them understand all of these landmines that we know are coming. Mm -hmm. We know this. This is not new. Each market is a little bit different. Absolutely. But I think that one of the things that gets lost on the retailer side is that these are widgets, right? Cannabis is a widget of sorts. It's perishable mm -hmm. and it, it is not that much more complicated than that. Obviously there's regulations and there's specific things about, you know, it's a higher, you know, um, uh, shrinkage rate, all that other stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, we're talking about retail, right? And, and on the, the ag side, on the grow side, we're talking about high tech ag. And in the middle, we're talking about food production, right? Like there are similar industries that we can pull all of these right. lessons in from and help people with playbooks and help people with, in our case, just hardware, right? So it's one less thing in that whole pile of things they need to think about. Now, the right question to ask if somebody's buying hardware from us is, okay, now what? Right. right? It's always now what? But having a few steps ahead of you mapped out, it's about as good as you can get. Yeah. for a lot of this yeah. and then you have to figure out okay can i get open and also i'm gonna move away from hardware for a second people that's what a lot of people get wrong yes they just hire the wrong people with not the right experience and not the right attitude of understanding that this is going to change yeah. right it's a life of change well it's it all boils down to almost any industry the people yeah right like, do you have people who work in your shop that have an eye towards compliance, but also selling product? Like, but they have a retail, right? right. Is it, you know, Krista's cut? Like, you just have the people that are going to make it successful. Yep. Um, and the more people you have, the more you can get it right or get it wrong. And I think that's challenging too. But again, it puts the pressure on, like, like we had someone that's opening up January 15th in New Jersey. And like, now he has people. Like, like he didn't, last month he didn't have people, now he has people. And those people are waiting just like he is for the license. And when the right. background check, like, you know, right. it's really, now it's about motivating people to hand Do the, the reins to. Yeah. Totally. And, and there's also this, uh, that's word I'm looking for. When somebody gets their license, right? Like you were saying, that's 
the beginning of day one. Yeah. Right. That's like, okay. And then they take a breather They're like, okay, well we're going to open in six months or three months or whatever that is. Those goalposts change. Oh, yeah. And also prioritizing what's important up front, like finding the right people on day point zero one, you should be looking for your next generation of leaders that you can bring in. And even if we're talking about one location, you need to have a, the right smart person running it and you need to support them, yeah. which is what pre-rolled, what forte, what curate, all we're doing is supporting the owners. In this one instance in New Jersey, they don't do the background check until you get your license. So like you have people ready to go to go to the background check to then get your license to then wait like it's a very difficult hiring process. Yeah. It's like yeah. come on board, but then there's gonna be a background check which you may not pass, but it's also gonna take fifteen days. Like you're just paying people to <sighs> wait. You know, speaking of of knowing what's ahead, I don't understand how these states don't see this I don't know. ahead of time, right? We have the playbooks, but then also it's about the execution of the playbook. And so you know, New York is a great example of that. You can have all the best intentions. You can have all the best, you know, social equity ideas. Right. But then when it comes to execution and lawsuits, which, yeah. you know, are, are, are one of the variables they can't control. We had, a, but. we had a lawyer on first this morning in New York. She was smiling when she said it was the most litigious state. I don't think she even noticed she was doing it. I think she was trying to tell a joke. <laughs> you're saying too much saying, here. I was like, Wait, you're smiling too much. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, it is. And it's, it's, I actually just on that subject, I don't think that a lot of folks in our industry, everybody's salivating over the business opportunity. All right, fine. But I don't think they quite realize how crushed a lot of our friends are going to be when they realize that their model doesn't scale. Right. We're going to have so many licenses at once. Nothing like we've seen before. And I don't know that everybody's going to be prepared for that onslaught of, of new folks that don't have the lessons to learn from. New York does not have the biggest illicit market. They do not have, there's a lot of, of yeah. 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 Well, yeah. You have to be running so perfectly from day one Yeah. with basically not writing off any of your expenses to like yeah. you really have to be on it from day one as opposed to being able, like most businesses, to make some variability of mistakes. Totally. And, and, and over that, the first 12 months of most operations are gravy. Right. You launch, there's not a lot of competition, you're figuring your shit out, but you're not really looking at all of your accounts payables. Right. You're just thinking you're making money and so it's okay. But having that discipline up front and knowing that going in really does make the difference when we look at month 18 or 24 when it starts getting dry. Yeah. Then panic sets in. Well, you don't want to be panicked, you want to be prepared. And that's hard for a lot of folks. And so any way that, that pre-rolled or carry can, and forte can make it easier that's really what we're here for. I want to see this industry succeed. I want more access to the plant. I want access for everybody, yeah. uh, if they want it or not. But everybody has a, a, a human right to have a, this plant. So any way we can make it easier for people to access that, we're here for it. Well, I'm in favor of that and in favor of you helping them do that. And I want to be... Um Respectful of Meneer's time, too. <laughs> and you should want to be, too, because he works for you. Um, thank you so much, Eric, for thank coming you. in this morning and for uh, making time and sharing your expertise and talking about pre-roll hardware. We, of course, will see you soon, I'm sure. I hope uh, so. If not, like, later today, but certainly online and in real life uh, in the weeks and months to come. So thanks for coming back. Amazing. Thank you, thank and you. congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back from Planet 13 on Cultivated Live. I'm Jay Rosenthal. She's Krista. We'll be back with Manir Hawk, really, for this time uh, in just a moment. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Thank you.